This episode of Binging with Babish is presented by The Singleton. It's great neat over ice or mixed into a cocktail. The Singleton is perfect if you're new to scotch. Today I'm mixing it up in an old fashioned with maple twist, which would be a welcome addition to any heavy Thanksgiving meal. Now let's get started on these sweet potatoes. I'm taking them one step further by including the Singleton 12 year old as a secret ingredient. Screw it, bring on the yams. <laughs> well, but you've, you've worked so hard. Yams! Yeah. Okay. <laughs> I just want to say that I'm real sorry for whatever I, I did to you in high school. Oh, it wasn't just me. We had a club. You had a club? That's right. The I Hate Rachel Green Club. Hey, what's up, guys? Welcome back to Binging with Babish, where this week we're taking a look at the yams from Friends, which I'm guessing were not yams at all, but sweet potatoes like these ones. Here in the States, the word yam and sweet potato are used interchangeably, but they are an entirely different genus of things. And since real yams are typically imported from tropical climates, the domestic sweet potato is going to be our weapon of choice. I've got three large ones here, about four pounds worth, that I'm going to peel and cut into one-inch chunks. It doesn't have to be an exact science. You want them to be roughly the same size, so they cook at roughly the same rate, as we cook them the way we would most potatoes in cold water brought to a boil. Once we've heavily salted these guys and brought them up to a simmer, we're cooking for 12 to 15 minutes until completely cooked through and showing no resistance when stabbed with a paring knife. This is going to be the foundation for our super basic sweet potato casserole. Go ahead and drain these and put them in a big old bowl, along with some enhancements, 8 ounces of light brown sugar, 4 ounces of unsalted melted butter, a teaspoon of vanilla extract, a generous pinch of kosher salt, and get to mashing. Now, sweet potatoes are pretty fibrous little tubers. So you're not going to get these super smooth with a potato masher, but they'll still be very, very good. Generously grease a 9x13 pan with nonstick spray. Spread them out nice and evenly, but it doesn't matter if you get them super smooth because we're going to top them with something I wasn't allowed to have on my yams as a child, marshmallows. An entire 10 ounce bag of the mini variety. Spread those out nice and evenly, and then this guy's headed into a 325 degree Fahrenheit oven with the rack set in the lowest position for anywhere from 25 to 30 minutes until the marshmallows are golden brown and have coalesced into a pebbly marshmallow marshmallow singularity. Let that sit for 5-10 to 10 minutes before serving and that's all there is to it, a super simple, unbelievably delicious sweet potato casserole. Now despite going from raw sweet potato to casserole in under an hour, it's got to be the best sweet potato casserole I've ever tasted, maybe because I've never tried it with marshmallows before. So what can we possibly do to improve on an already perfect food? Well, we're going to have to get pretty nitpicky. Now this recipe is going to be kind of an amalgamation of improvements. You can take any one of them and apply it to the last recipe and it will have an effect. First up, instead of boiling our sweet potato cubes, we're going to sous vide them. Food scientist Harold McGee has pointed out that sous viding sweet potatoes at 170 degrees Fahrenheit activates some kind of enzyme or something that makes them naturally sweeter, so we don't have to use quite as much sugar. This is going to be far and away the most optional step because it is the biggest pain in the ass, especially when you accidentally make your bag too big. So go ahead and subdivide your potatoes into two smaller bags, maybe with a cinnamon stick or two, and then drop them into a 170 degree Fahrenheit water bath for one and one half hours, weighing down if necessary to make sure that they're submerged. Merge. Now this is going to do that enzyme sweetness thing, but it's also going to mostly cook the potatoes so that they're ready to mash up when they come out of the sous vide. So while these guys float, we're going to make some brown butter. Dumping 5 ounces of unsalted butter into a medium saucepan, swirling pretty constantly over medium heat until the milk solids separate and start to turn a nutty brown. Set aside to cool and then 90 minutes later we got ourselves some potatoes. Go ahead and fetch these out of Davy Jones's miniature locker and place them in a large bowl along with more enhancements. Our brown butter, make sure you get all those little brown bits, four and a half ounces of light brown sugar, four ounces of creme fraiche, two tablespoons of maple syrup, one tablespoon of vanilla paste or a teaspoon of vanilla extract, half teaspoon ground cinnamon, quarter teaspoon freshly grated nutmeg, generous pinch of kosher salt, and for both structure and richness, three beaten egg yolks. Go ahead and mix those all together with a paddle until evenly distributed, but you'll notice that I'm not mashing, and that's because I'm gonna puree. The only way to break down all that fibrous junk in the sweet potatoes is with the power of a food processor, blitzing for about 60 seconds in batches until dreamily smooth. Once again, we're placing this in a 9 by 13 casserole, this time generously lubed up with unsalted butter. Spread it around nice and evenly. Whatever you do, don't taste it because it has eggs in it. Andy, Andy, I said no tasties. God, you're difficult. So now for an added flavor explosion, we're going to make ourselves a pecan streusel. Combining four and a half ounces of all-purpose flour, six ounces of brown sugar, and four and a half ounces of roughly processed pecans. This kind of undoes any sugar savings that we got from our sous vide process, so do this at your own risk. Once all the dry ingredients are combined, 
fine, we're going to add two and a half ounces of melted butter, adding more as necessary until the streusel has the texture of very wet sand. Press it together and crumble it over the top of the sweet potatoes, and then this guy's headed into that 325 degree Fahrenheit oven for the same 25 to 30 minutes, during which time we can make our whiskey marshmallow topping. We're starting by dissolving half an ounce or two packets of unflavored gelatin in five ounces of cold water, setting that aside to set, and then making a sugar syrup. Into a small saucepan goes six ounces of sugar, two ounces of water, one ounce of light corn syrup, and two ounces of the Singleton 12-year-old single malt scotch whiskey. Whisk this together gently to combine and place over medium heat, covering and bringing to a simmer. Once it's simmering, take off the lid and then we're going to cook this to 255 degrees Fahrenheit, otherwise known as the firm ball stage. Once that temperature is reached, kill the heat, add a little splash of whiskey, and set aside to cool, down to 212 degrees Fahrenheit, during which time we're going to set our gelatin over a double boiler to melt it and combine it and our 212 degree Fahrenheit sugar syrup in the bowl of a stand mixer. Then using our wire whisk attachment, we're going to whip this guy on medium high speed, starting off slow of course, for up to 10 to 15 minutes until it's damn near quadrupled in volume and it's reached the stiff peak stage. And with that, my friends, you have made homemade whiskey marshmallow, which you could pour into a casserole and cut into cubes for traditional marshmallows, or before it sets, you can pipe it onto your slightly cooled casserole. You want it just cooled enough that it doesn't melt the marshmallow. Then you can let this set in then you can let this set for an hour and put it in a 350 degree Fahrenheit oven to brown it. Or if your casserole is still hot and you want to eat it right now, you can use a torch. And there you have it, the ultimate super smooth, super sweet, super crunchy, super creamy, super marshmallowy sweet potato casserole. I don't have footage of it, but we picked at this throughout the day and the three of us almost finished the entire thing. Now all we need is an accompanying cocktail for our holiday meal. I'm thinking of maple old fashioned, for which I'm going to make a quick little orange peel garnish. And then I'm constructing this cocktail in the glass, so I got a big old ice cube here. Then over top, I'm going to pour one and a half ounces of the Singleton 12, a little splash of club soda, which I like because it kind of lightens things up, a few dashes of your favorite bitters, and about a teaspoon of maple syrup to taste. This plays really nice as a sweetener in an old fashioned. Mix everybody together thoroughly by virtue of your bar spoon, garnish with your orange twist, and there you have it, a maple old fashioned. A perfect pairing for our sweet potato casserole or whatever else Thanksgiving throws at you. Thanks again to the Singleton Single Malt Scotch Whiskey for partnering with me on this episode and the other episodes this year. If you're intimidated by scotch, don't be. The Singleton 12-year-old is easy to enjoy and mixes so well into your favorite cocktails because it's light and slightly sweet. These same flavor notes work wonderfully in the sweet potatoes. When you gather with friends and family this holiday, reach for any of the bottles in the Singleton family. There's something for everyone's taste preference. To get a bottle for yourself, head to the link in the video description. Thanks again to the Singleton for a great partnership this year.